Welcome to Unit 5. This is the first segment of a multi-part lecture on informal fallacies associated with failed induction. The segments cover material presented in Chapter 7 of our text. The image you see is a detail of a painting by Matthias Grunewald entitled The Temptation of St. Anthony. It was painted in 1512. We have some very specific objectives in this unit. First, we'll do an overview of the work we have before us in Units 5, 6, 7, and 8, which are all concerned with informal fallacies. Then we'll turn to some specific fallacies that are the result of failed inductive arguments. These include hasty generalization, weak analogy, several varieties of false cause, including post hoc ergo propter hoc, known causa pro causa, and oversimplified cause, the fallacy of appeal to ignorance, known in Latin as the ad ignorantiam, and the fallacy of unqualified authority, sometimes called by its Latin name, the ad viracundiam. We'll also take a look at appeals to authority that are quite legitimate. We've been using the term fallacy. What exactly is a fallacy? It's a mistake in an argument, either on the formal or informal level. We know that there are certain criteria that we expect to find in both deductions and inductions, and when these are absent, a fallacy has been committed. In the next few units, we'll be looking at informal fallacies and argumentation that are so notorious that they've acquired names for themselves. Another way of saying this is to call a fallacy a defective argument, and there are very specific types of defect. Some affect deductive arguments, some inductive arguments, and some fallacies affect both. The penguin in this cartoon is arguing fallaciously, but he seems quite unaware of it. Our goal is to be very aware of fallacies, to be able to classify and name them, and, most importantly, to be able to detect them when they occur in arguments. So why is it important to be able to detect fallacies? so that we can avoid them in our own thinking and spot them in other people's arguments. Here are the specific fallacies that we'll be encountering in the next few learning units. In this unit, we'll be looking at the fallacies of failed induction, including hasty generalization, weak analogy, false cause, appeal to ignorance, and appeal to unqualified authority. In unit six, we'll be looking at begging the question, begging the question against, complex question, and false alternatives, as well as accident. In Unit 7, we'll be studying the fallacies of unclear language, which include slippery slope, equivocation, amphiboly, and confused predication. And in Unit 8, we'll look at fallacies of relevance, including appeal to pity, appeal to force, appeal to emotion, ad hominem, beside the point, and straw man. Let's turn to the fallacies that can result when inductive inferences go astray. You see here a woodcut by the great German artist Albrecht Dürer depicting a popular allegory in the 1500s, the ship of fools, adrift on the high seas with neither a purpose nor a captain. And I'll bet they're exchanging fallacious arguments. Hasty generalization is the first fallacy we'll encounter. You will remember enumerative induction from our last unit. The conclusion of an enumerative induction is always a universal generalization, such as all leopards are carnivores or no leopard is a carnivore. So an argument that uses enumerative induction might go like the one you see here. Premise 1, all leopards so far observed have been carnivorous. Conclusion, so all leopards are carnivorous. As you can see, if the premises are true, it's a strong inductive inference which means that even though it's non-conclusive, the evidence is sufficient for us to accept the claim that's made in the conclusion, although it's always possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. There are some important things to note when we reason using enumerative induction. First, our sample must be large enough. We need to have observed many leopards. Usually, the larger the sample size, the more reliable the induction. Second, our sample must be both comprehensive and random. Comprehensiveness refers to the cross-section that makes up our sample. We must have observed leopards in the wild and in captivity, in Asia and in South America, female leopards and male leopards, young leopards and old leopards, etc.
In other words, our sample must be representative of the population of leopards as a whole. The sample must also be random, which is a statistical requirement. It basically means that we have not favored any particular leopards. Any given leopard has had as good a chance of being included in the sample as any other leopard. That is, our sample is not biased toward any particular kind of leopard. When we fail to observe the standards of sample size, sample comprehensiveness, and random sampling, we run the risk of generalizing too hastily, and that's the fallacy of hasty generalization. Here's an example. We've all heard someone jump to a conclusion based upon an experience he or she has had. Listen to this. I was riding my bike in Brooklyn. A car with New Jersey plates comes up behind me and starts beeping the horn and then tries to force me off the road. As the car passes, the driver yells, get out of the way. You know what? All those Jersey drivers are jerks. The problem with this induction is the sample size. The conclusion has been drawn from a sample of just one person. Here's another faulty induction that can be characterized as a hasty generalization. College students seem very satisfied with the Republican Party. We surveyed thousands of young Republicans on campuses across the United States and found overwhelming support for Republicans in Congress. The problem in this case isn't with the sample size, but the composition of the sample. It's made up exclusively of young Republicans. As a result, the survey cannot be considered comprehensive or representative of college students in general. It's skewed to favor a certain segment of the student population, and thus the conclusion is a generalization that we can't accept. It's a hasty generalization. 